Hi, my name's Emma, and I'm a playwright. You're my library, always so business, but you never show it. You just sit in with it, but I know the score, and you're killing it. So for the first real video in this series, I am going to be talking about the process of starting on a new project. So every time I get a new idea for a play, I have this handy dandy tiny little notebook, which is really cute. It says dreams on the front cover and it's got a little ribbon in it and it's just so cute, but I carry this around with me literally everywhere. Usually it lives in my backpack because I take my backpack everywhere. I don't take it like to the grocery store, but like if I'm going somewhere else, spending a day somewhere else, I put this in like my jacket pocket or like even my jeans pocket. And whenever I have an idea for any kind of story, I jot it down in here. I highly recommend any writer, any creative person have a little notebook like this because it's a catch-all for all your little ideas. And then when you're going back and you're like, I need to write a 10 minute for this festival that I want to submit to, but I don't have any good 10 minutes that I feel proud of. And you can flip open your handy little journal and be like, oh, here's an idea that I had a long time ago when I was waiting for the bus and now I can use this idea to really quickly write this 10 minute play. So super great, love these little notebooks. So in my process in starting, I get a new idea, I jot it down in here. If I'm really excited about a new idea, usually what happens to me is I get excited about a lot of things. Like I have so many ideas in here that I'm like, I wish I could write them all, but I mean, maybe some people do this, but I can't just start writing five different full-length plays at the same time. I can be in different processes with many different plays at the same time, which is where I am right now, but I can't start a bunch of new things at once, so I have to pick the one that I'm most excited about and stick with it until I have a draft of it. So I'm trying to decide how much I want to tell you about like my capstone, and I want to keep it pretty vague. But I had an idea that I wanted to write about immigrants because of everything that's happening in our country right now. And I had a slightly more specific idea than that, that I wanted to write about young women immigrants in the 1950s and tie that into to modern day as well. That was my original like STEM baby idea. And then I took that idea and I decided, okay, I'm entering my senior year, this is gonna be my capstone project because I've never written historical fiction before, so this is gonna be something that really challenges me and makes me step outside the box in a lot of ways that I haven't done yet. And it's going to make me explore a lot in terms of dialogue because all these women are going to speak differently. So it's going to be a big challenge. And honestly, I am terrified, scared out of my skin, especially because I am a white woman and I'm trying to write a story about immigrants and to be fair, some of these immigrants are like Irish and German and I'm German and like I'm really scared that I'm going to misrepresent someone and I think that is something that is terrifying for me and I'm trying my best to do research and talk to people and talk to my wonderful dramaturg and make sure that I am telling the story with care. Uh, that kind of went on a tangent. I don't know how to structure these videos. Okay, so back to planning and how to start the process. So I have my idea. I now know that I'm going to use this idea to actually write a full-length play and I know in what time frame I'm going to write it because I'm going to write it over the course of this semester and then next semester I will culminate it in doing a workshop and a staged reading of it so that it gets put out into the world. But the writing itself will take place this first semester. So then I start with what my playwriting teacher has taught me to call the discovery process, which is basically where I do a ton of things to get together a bunch of ideas, a bunch of research, a bunch of images, music, anything that I think feeds into the world of the play and helps create the world of the play, I compile and that is the discovery process. So I have another notebook specifically for my discovery process and that is this beautiful baby, which I actually just got this semester. So this is a fairly new thing for me that I'm trying out. The thing that I love about this notebook is it has blank space and then it also has this grid down below, which I think is incredibly useful because what I can do is I can draw 
in the upper section and then I can write in the lower sections. So on this page I have information about Ariella, my Jewish American character. I've done a basic character breakdown outlining things like her values, her goals, her obstacles, and then I also put a collage of images of just people that make me think of this character, like we have Miss Maisel from the uh, Marvelous Ms. Maisel, which I love that show. This like collage page is helping me get a clear idea of who these characters are before I start writing them. So I do the breakdown of the characters because I am such a character oriented person. I start with character and then the thing that I struggle with is plot. So the next step is to figure out what my characters are doing, which is plot. So when I figure out their goals and obstacles, that kind of starts to feed into what the plot is. Another thing that I've learned from my play writing teacher is I like to do the Pixar story structure. So I just start with once upon a time there was blank and then you have your main character. Every day blank did this and then you have your stasis A, so the things that happen before the play takes off. Until one day blank. The until one day is your inciting incident, so it's that moment that sparks the rest of the action and starts starts your play off on its course. And so then you have the because of that, which are all of the rising action of the play. So because of that, so-and-so does this. 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 And that is all of your action that's taking place in the meat of your play. And then you get to the crisis climax, which is basically until one day, blank. This happens. Whatever that thing is has thrust you into your stasis B. So it has irrevocably changed your character from beginning to end in some way. So that's what I do to figure out the plot of a play. I'm struggling with this play because it's a lot of characters sort of sharing the protagonist role. In a way, there is still a protagonist, but I don't want to talk too much about that yet because I haven't totally figured it out. But there are all of these subplots, which is something that I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around at this point. So Pixar's story structure is a helpful way to simplify plot. And then after I have figured out those things, I do things like finding music that I think inspires the show. In this case, because this is historical fiction, I'm reading, I'm trying to find a lot of interviews from um, immigrants from these countries that, that my immigrants are from and I'm trying to find interviews with them so that I can hear or at least see written out how they speak so that I can use that in my dialogue. And so that is another useful way that I'm gathering information for discovery process now. Another thing I'm doing obviously is researching the location and time period in which the play is set. I'm researching a lot of the aspects of the different things that my characters are interested in. Like I have one character that really wants to work for NASA, so I'm researching the history of women working for NASA and figuring out how plausible it is for her to have this dream, which, totally plausible, there was a black woman working for NASA in 1947. I got so excited when I figured out that my character could look up to that woman. I was like, this is so great. So I'm, I'm really enjoying steeping myself in the history. So you got the research and then you move on to writing. And you're not writing the play yet, you're still in discovery process. Now you are writing scenes between characters, throwing two characters in a room together, figuring out what they would say to each other, how they would interact. You can learn a lot about your characters by just throwing them into the settings, which is really fun. So that's sort of where I am currently. And after I have written a bunch more stuff, then I will begin what I think will be the last phase of my discovery process, which is to create an outline, which is something that I have never actually done before for a play because I really love discovering what happens as I write. But I think for this play, I'm really gonna need an outline. And it's also something that I've been learning from my other wonderful playwriting teacher. And she said that she creates outlines for all of her stuff and I was like, I need to try that. So I'm gonna do an outline, basically starting from scene one and saying, this is the scene, this is everything that I need to accomplish in this scene, moving on to scene two, going through the whole play in that fashion, outlining it, and then 
I will move into the actual writing process, which will be discussed in another video. <laughs> so to summarize really quickly, in the process of starting a new play, things you do are have the idea, write the idea down, revisit the idea, and decide how you're going to use it, what you're going to use it for, uh, what format best serves the story. Then you begin the discovery process, which starts with for me, piecing together characters, piecing together images, piecing together music, piecing together history, and then you move on to writing snippets, then you move on to outlining. And that is my current process of everything I do before I actually start writing a play. I hope that this video was fun and kind of helpful for you. I'm really excited to put out more videos soon, so if you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment down below, do all those things. If you have any questions, I would love, love, love to hear them and answer them. Ooh, what if I end every one of these videos with a little writing challenge? Oh my god, that's so much fun. Okay. So, your first little writing challenge as you leave this video, I want you to write something. It can be a short story, it can be a scene, it can be anything about this character. Comment down below if you completed that challenge, and if enough people are interested, I would love to create some sort of Dropbox online where we can share stories for anyone who's interested sharing these prompts. And thank you so much for watching, happy writing, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye!